If you've never made pumpkin pie using fresh pumpkin puree, you gotta try it. In this video, Hyla's gonna show you just how easy it is to make your own pumpkin puree. Plus, she's got some tips on how to roast pumpkin seeds. Hey dudes, I'm Hyla from Hyla Cooking, and today on Home and Garden for Mere Mortals, I'm gonna tell you all about pumpkins. I've got a little pumpkin and a really big pumpkin here. So this one is like a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin or a decorative pumpkin. Um, this is not the kind of pumpkin that you want to eat. The kind of pumpkin that you want to eat is this one right here. This is called a pie pumpkin most often. Um, they're always about this size, a couple pounds each. The flesh is a lot denser and sweeter and less stringy than this kind of pumpkin. This kind of pumpkin is like a little bit kind of watery and stringy, just not ideal for eating. So we'll keep this one aside as our decorative pumpkin. Just sit there and look pretty. And then I'm gonna cut this up. We're gonna talk about, I'm gonna show you how to make a pumpkin puree from scratch. And this is great to use in pumpkin pie or pumpkin bread or any kind of recipes that use a can of pureed pumpkin, you can make your own. So we're gonna start out with a sharp knife. This, this is the most dangerous part. Dangerous because it's kind of rolly. But once we get that off, then we can flip it and now we've got a more stable surface. So I'm just gonna start by cutting it in half. And then we can scrape the seeds out. I'm also gonna show you how to roast the seeds. So you don't have to do that, but it's a nice way to sort of make the most of your pumpkin and it's very fall, you know, it's like a real Halloween-y thing to do. And when I do it, I try to get the seeds out but I don't worry about scraping out this um, stringy part because that actually adds a lot of color and a lot of pumpkin flavor to the finished puree. So you can leave that in. Any other little seeds we can pull out after the pumpkin is cooked. And you can roast uh, jack-o'-lantern pumpkin seeds too. I'm sure you've all done that. When you're carving your pumpkin, save the seeds. And you can do it the same way. Actually, like butternut squash, any kind of winter squash that has big seeds, you can roast them all the same way. Butternut squash seeds are really nice because they're a lot smaller than pumpkin seeds and they have a, like a more higher like meat to shell ratio. They're really good. Okay, so you can set the seeds aside. We'll deal with those in a minute. I'm gonna keep cutting up this pumpkin. Cut each half into quarters. And it, you might be tempted to want to boil your pumpkin to make puree but I do it in the oven and you end up with a drier puree that's got a more concentrated flavor. Boiling it kind of ends up a little mushy and watery. Then we're just gonna put these on a baking sheet. I've got a little parchment here. If you have a sill pad or something like that, that's fine too. It does make a little bit of a sticky mess, so I would recommend lining it with something. Put them cut side down like that, and then that's it. We're just gonna put them in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes until when you press on it, it's soft and it's kind of collapsed a little bit. And while that's cooking, we'll work on cleaning up our seeds for roasting. Back to the seeds. I'm gonna put a little water in here. And then the easiest way to do it is just get your hands in there. This is something that kids really like to help out with. It's fun to do. And just sort of pop the seeds off of these little membranes and you can Get rid of that part. Feels kind of spooky and Halloween -y to stick your hands in a big bowl of water and slimy pumpkin seeds and membranes. There's a gnat in here. That's Halloween-y. We're getting in the spirit with the flying insects, y'all. Okay, and then I've got a baking sheet here. Once your seeds are um, mostly free of orange stuff, a little bit won't. It's not gonna kill you, okay? Kind of spread them out here. Okay, so then save this water. If you wanna like put it on your compost, water some outdoor plants with it, pat them dry with a clean little dish towel. Paper towel works too. Don't have to be crazy, but I do like to remove some of the liquid. And then the seasoning part. I'm gonna drizzle them with just like a couple teaspoons of oil tops. Like not, you don't really need very much at all. Oh, there's a string in there. That's not edible. Of course, we're gonna add a little bit of salt and some pepper. And get that mixed around. Chili powder is good or cayenne pepper if you wanna do something kind of spicy. I actually really like lemon pepper for a nice change. And then some people like to do sweet, like with cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice. 
That's not usually what I go for. I like more savory things, but to each their own. And then we can put them in the oven with the pumpkin. They won't take as long. They'll just take maybe about 20 minutes and you wanna give them a little stir about halfway through, around the 10 minute mark, give them a little stir and then let them cook until they're nice and crunchy. Okay, roasted pumpkin has been thoroughly cooled. It's nice, you can see it got a lot darker, it's really soft. Now you can make your puree in a food processor or a food mill. I have neither of those, so I just do it with my stand mixture and the um, paddle attachment. So you just wanna scrape the flesh off the skin. Mm, smells pumpkin-y. I think if you have always made pumpkin pie with canned pumpkin, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the difference when you make your own pumpkin puree. You can see it got a little bit caramelized on the edges that we're touching the baking sheet, and that's going to add a lot of sweetness to our puree. I'll just blend it up. Okay, that looks great. Now you're gonna get a smoother texture with a food processor or a food mill, but this is smooth enough for any recipe that calls for canned pumpkin puree. And the seeds, here they are. I'll show you. You can see this took about 20 minutes, and now we've got some nice, crunchy, healthy little snacks. Mm. Leave me a comment below and let me know your favorite recipe to use pumpkin puree in. Don't forget to click that little red subscribe button down there to subscribe to the Home and Garden for Mere Mortals channel. And check out my channel, Hyla Cooking, for lots of recipes, including some pumpkin recipes. See you next time. Bye. Hey, I'm Hyla from Hyla Cooking, and today on Home and Garden for Mere Mortals, I am going to show you three ways to preserve fresh herbs. Preserve the herbs. That's going to be my new bumper sticker. Okay, the first way is drying. Drying?